know, it's a really interesting question. Why do executives or corporate representatives serve on nonprofit boards? What are they looking for? What do they get out of it? We've actually done a number of surveys and asked graduates of Kellogg School of Management and other places, why do you serve on nonprofit boards if they do? And the overwhelming response is, because I want to give something back, because I have a passion about the mission, because I want to make a difference. Sometimes people will say, I will have a chance to hone my skills, or maybe I'll get to meet some neat people. But in the main, it's really to contribute something to an organization that's trying to help other people. Most nonprofits are small organizations, and yet any organization to be exceptional needs expertise in strategic planning and marketing and financial forecasting and personnel management. Nonprofits are just too small to hire people with that expertise or to buy it through consultants. So if they can have it on their board, what a wonderful way to have, for them to have access to the skills and expertise they need without having to pay for it. A great board member is someone who, first and foremost, will be loyal to the organization, will put the organization's interests ahead of their own. This is not about your own self-interest. This is about the organization and its mission. A great board member is someone who will be a team player, but will think independently, so won't be swayed just because someone they care about wants them to do one thing or another, but will really think through the facts and decide what will help the organization the most. And then my, my thought is, most important, a great board member is someone who will ask really hard questions and state the hard truths. So if they see something going on that they're not sure about or they think is maybe not good, they'll mention it, they'll point it out, they'll ask questions about it. You know, you can think back to about a decade ago when the Enron scandal and all the other corporate boardroom scandals emerged and the U.S. Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley legislation, which really called upon corporate board members to be far more accountable to finances and other things. And the spillover effect into the nonprofit field has been very acutely felt. So nonprofit boards have those same demands on them to be accountable, to select the auditor, to receive the audit, to meet an executive session, to discuss the finances, a number of things that for years nonprofit boards probably didn't pay too much attention to. And then more recently, with the economic turndown, as nonprofits have greater demands for their services, and fewer resources to actually meet that demand. Nonprofit board members have found themselves needing to understand where are the money going, where can we make cuts, and importantly, how can we bring in new resources given the situation we're in. You know, it's very flattering to be asked to join a board, whether it's by a friend or an associate. The, all of us, we have this inclination to say yes, um, but vetting an organization first is really important. You know, understanding what the mission is, whether or not you can be passionate about the mission, because if you can't, there's no point in trying to become engaged. Understanding what the job of a board member is. Are you expected to come to committee meetings? What committees? How often? How many times does the board meet? Is there an expectation that you are supposed to make a certain donation to the board? So what's the job, and is this the kind of work I'm happy to be doing? Um, it's also important to understand who the other people on the board, and whether or not they're the kind of people you'd want to work with, and finally, understand how important it is to ask those hard questions and speak the hard truths.